Welcome to Bungalows for Bachelors. We are going to knock out the beams on the first floor today. Let's get to it. Starting with this guy. Just pick one and go for it. Patio. There's only one beam on the patio, so we'll just call it the patio beam. And we'll get the span while we're here. Nine foot six, let's call it. So now I'm going to go back to first floor ceiling, which is where we are. And work from there. Nine foot six. In this case, there's a post on the left and a wall on the right. This is bottom mount to a column, we'll call it. Pine. Great. What's the load? Okay, well our ceiling is running front to back and our roof is also running front to back. And they're both sitting on this beam. So let's grab some tributary width and we'll be good to go. Halfway over. The other thing you can do when you're doing this is grab the full dimension and then just do math to get to half. Three foot ten, I'm gonna average up to four. Four feet of ceiling. Four feet ceiling on the front side. Well, it'll be on top because this is a drop beam. Five and ten. Good to go. Let's figure out how much roof we have. So we need to know what the overhang is, and we'll go from there basically. So this was a 16 inch overhang. So this is to scale, so I can just grab all of the overhang, right? Because there's nothing holding this end of the overhang. And then halfway between the wall to the next wall, give or take. Five foot one, we'll go ahead and call it five foot six. Five and a half feet. <clears throat> Excuse me. Roof is 10 and 20 roof live roof slope let's go double check that it's a 312 back here so we'll go ahead and account for that and we'll call it roof rough all right and then let's go select our product I think maybe two two by tens uh, two two by eights is probably plenty let's check Oh, we're 91 percent okay so two 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 two, 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 two by tens. Good deal. The more you do this, the better you'll get at just guessing the first shot. So, okay, so two two by tens. Let me go back to the sheet and grab a label. Two two by ten. We go okay let's do this guy next okay so any beams that are in the floor system we want to use the same height as the floor joists so that theoretically everything can be flush we have 11 and 7 8 TJIs All right we wrote that down here 11 and 7 8 tall so we're going to use the 11 and 7 8 LVLs and we don't want to use commodity lumber in a floor system if we can avoid it because the expansion and contraction with the width is quite large. We want to use stable straight material. This is pretty standard. So we're going to use LVLs at 11 and 7 eighths. And this is a 13 foot 3 and a half span. So we're going to go with, let's call it 13 and a half feet span and design this guy. What room are we in? This is the guest bedroom beam. Guest bedroom. Spans and supports 13 and a half feet. Double check that I was correct. 13 and a half feet. Yep, good to go. Okay, and this is bottom on a wall blocking I'm sure okay great 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 loads okay what is loading this well the first thing that's gonna be on top of this is well first of all ceiling is running this way so the ceiling joists from this guest bedroom here are gonna land here 
and then the floor joist remember we decided we're going left to right through this whole floor system so the floor is not loading it but the ceiling joist are so let's grab that three foot ten we'll call it four feet of ceiling okay look four feet of ceiling loading the front sorry the back because this is going to be installed in the floor system so the bottom of the beam sits on the wall and the ceiling joist the bottom of the ceiling joist needs to be in line with the, the top of the wall too so they're going to use hangers or something in here to hang on this beam on the back side of the beam okay so we got the ceiling what else is on here well that's all that I can see on here that's gonna load it so let's look over here at this and keep in mind that this wall right here is the one that's sitting on that beam okay so we need to account first of all for the whole height of the wall plus any gable height that's sitting on the beam so let's look at the elevation to see how much height we're gonna put on the beam okay rear view so about I'm draw a line. So this is the plate height approximately. So I'm gonna go about horizontal. Just for visualization. Okay, so our beam is above this line in here somewhere. And all of this wall is sitting on it. That's quite a bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a tapered load from here to where the top of the wall was. And remember 13 and a half feet was the length of the beam. What was that? 13, 11? Okay, that's close. Okay, so our beam exists and it's got that height of wall on it. And it's got about. Oh, wow. Okay, let's just go to there. About that height of wall. Okay. So we got that tapered load of wall. So we're going to put that on. Uh, we'll call this 5.5 and, and we'll call this 16.5. So five and a half to sixteen and a half. And remember, we're looking backwards right now, so it's just going to taper the other direction in our math. So this is a tapered full length from sixteen and a half to five and a half. On top, dead load is eight. No other loads. This is the wall. Okay, that takes care of the wall, all right, so the wall is the next thing directly sitting on the beam, there's no floor, so then you ask yourself what's sitting on the wall, because that will also add weight to the beam. Well, let's go back here and take a look. Well, this wall has a little bit of roof overhang on it, so if I were to go look at the roof plan here, you will see... There's a 16 inch overhang hanging out past there. And remember our rafters were 24 inches on center. So there's 12 feet back into the roof that is also contributing weight. So we got 12 inches plus 16 inches. We'll just call it three feet and be conservative. So we have three feet on top of roof, which is 10 and 20 and 10 12 slope this is roof overhang all right and that's all the loads so let's go select LVL 11 and 7 8 step the question is how many plies do I need well you really don't want to do one unless you can it's a really small scenario then you can so let's go with two and deflection's all great. I'm not going to break. Everything's happy. So we'll make this a two ply 11 and 7 eighths LVL. And I already. I don't think I've made another LVL beam yet. Yeah, I did not. So here's our first LVL beam. Oh, no, there's one in the other part of somewhere. Okay. Uh, so this is going to be 1 3 quarter by 11 7 eighths. 
LVO. There you go. Oh, sorry, one more thing. Two ply, there's two of them. All right, cool, let's keep going. Okay, here's a piece that I was just describing that we could use as a, as a single ply, right? So this beam right here is boxing out the top of the stairway. So what we know is LVL is very strong and this is only like a three foot span or something. So what's gonna happen is if I were to think about, you know, calculate like some weight of these stairs, putting weight here, cause the floor's going left to right, right? The floor's not loading it. I could use another eye joist here, uh, but I want something a little bit more solid to nail and solid and flat to nail all my stairs and everything too. So I'm gonna use one LVL, a single ply right there. And this is an exception where you can use a single. Well, you can do whatever you want, but this is where I would use a single right there. And then this guy right here is going to be uh, holding, we'll, we'll go ahead and design it. It's going to be overkill. And this is like, this is more of a beam, right? So this is holding a bunch of floor joists going left to right. And it's holding this and it's holding a little bit of weight here. So, you know, this one was going to need to go a little sturdier. So that's a two ply, two ply beam, right? And I happen to know that if I make it the 11 and 7 8 LVLs, that it'll be way overkill strength wise. Um, but it's a good fit for framing. So I will design it and prove to you that it's just unnecessary. But it's it's the choice we'll go with because it's good for building out the stairway. We will call this left of stairway. Make sure that's not confusing. That could be confused with this one. So left of stairway, front back. Left of stairway, front back. Great. Spans and supports. Four foot six. Great. Four and a half feet. And sitting on walls, happy dory, hunky dory. Okay, so let's just be super conservative here because it's totally fine. I'm not holding the floor necessarily here. Well, it, sort of, but not really. So I'm going to grab halfway from this wall, all the way halfway from here to this wall. Overestimate a little bit, seven foot three quarter. Let's call it eight feet just to be, just to show you how much it doesn't matter. Okay, eight feet on top is fine. Dead load of floor systems is 20. Floor live is 40. And this is floor. Okay. So we're not done because we got to check something, right? So we're holding the floor here. But what else is above that? Right here. So this is a railing. It is not a load bearing structure. So it's just a little railing, right? So there's just floor and railing above this that's that's making the corner of this floor system. So there's no more weight. There's nothing else. The railing weighs something, but like it's insignificant. So there's nothing else on top of this. So I'm actually good to go. And two ply LVLs, it's gonna be teeny tiny. Look at that. Eight percent. Deflection's basically totally stiff. So no problems here over designed but it's the right fit for using it's the right uh, members to be using for this location just because of how the stairways framed all right so that's good there let's go over and look at this guy okay so this is the bath now remember what happened here was this was a concentrated load that's why we added this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to see if I put a one, if I just make sure I get one floor joist below this wall, is that sufficient? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna design for that. And where did this beam load come from? The right end of this beam up here, primary bath, right, left. 
that guy right there. And these are the same because these are doing the same job over the same span. This one's actually a little bit less of a span because the wall is a little bit thicker, but we'll use this one for design. So let's do that. I'm going to add, uh, let's see, actually I'm going to copy. Full joist, joist concentrated, concentrated load is what I'm talking about. All right, so what's the span on the worst case side? Nine foot eight. Okay. All right. One one eight rim board. That's correct. Okay. So the load we're going to put on here is we are assuming we're going to insert this joist into our existing layout. So it's not really going to be responsible for taking on like regular floor weight. It's going to be responsible theoretically for only supporting this concentrated load. So that load is six foot nine in from the left side of the beam. So we were going to add a point load at six feet nine. So you can see what's happening here. Here's my eye joist. And there's no weight on it yet. Hold on. OK. Oh, wait. We're going to link it instead. That's right. So we wanted the primary bath left right. Yeah. And then we want the right reaction. So we want number two. And this is located at six foot nine on our beam. There you go. So that's the point load coming down to sitting on our joist. And we'll delete this. OK. Product selection. Let's just leave the same joist and see if one ply does it. Look at that. All right. So our stiffness for our like happy happiness floor bounciness, 63 when we wanted 45. So we're, we're super stiff. It's, for, it's great. OK. We're at 24% you know, capacity, we're super fine. We don't need a beam. We don't need anything crazy. We just need to put a floor joist directly below this thing. So I'm going to notate that. Now uh, this, I'm going to leave the beam thing here and just write floor joist below. Okay. And I'm going to copy and paste because the same load is ha the same load is happening over here on this guy. All right, now this guy over here, let's look at him. He might be a little bit different. Well, he is different, so let's just design him too. Nine foot four. Uh, here's what I'm going to do to speed up this process. Okay, this is nine foot four, which means the span is less than this guy that I just did. And let's take a look at this load and see what the numbers are and compare it to the load that this guy is. And also, just so you're seeing what I'm doing, this guy is approximately three feet in from the edge of the wall. This guy is approximately two foot 11, okay? So these concentrated loads are about in the same place. The span is almost exactly the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the numbers. And I'm going to, instead of recalculating this guy, I'm going to say, is, is the weight numbers from this point less than or more than the ones from this point? If it was less than, then I'm not even going to waste my time calculating. I'm going to know that it's better. So I'm just going to put floor joist below. If it's more, OK, depending on how much, I might calculate it. So we'll see. So this was the what room. This is primary bedroom, front, back, rear. We're looking for this guy. And we're just going to compare numbers. OK, so primary bath, left, right. So the report is going to tell me on the right side of this beam in the bathroom, the total factored load was 428 pounds. All right. 
So that's the number I want to look at. Primary bedroom, front to back, rear. I'm looking for the wall support, 465 pounds. Okay, so this is 465. The other one was 428. Okay, so it's 40 pounds more. I'm going to look at the um, design of this and I'm going to see that I passed, I was at 24% capacity and stiffness was no problem. So I'm barely, I'm barely getting into my like strength of my eye joist here. So I'm going to assume 40 pounds extra is not going to be a problem. It's basically the same load and the same span and everything. So this is just fine. I'm going to just label this and move on. Again, if you have any doubts, you can always just calculate it for what it is. Okay, so this beam. This is the same premise. This is making the back side of the stairway, or the back side of the floor above the stairway. It's holding this wall, and this wall doesn't look like it has anything on top of it. Literally nothing is, is on top of this. Ceiling is running left to right. The roof is bracing to everything else around this, but it's, there's no weight on this. So there's only dead weight of the wall. And this is a short, tiny span. So I'd be, I'd be just totally fine if I did the same one LVL thing here. And for your visualization, I am going to show you where this happens. It's right here. So this is where we're going to go. This is a cross section. That's what I'm describing. That one ply is going to make that edge right there. All right. So I'm just going to copy this guy, come down here, paste it, boom, good to go. Okay. Moving on through, next is this guy right here. Okay, so this is going to be a, a good loaded one, but it's a short span, so I think two ply is fine. All right, but we're holding a lot of floor here. That's a lot of width of floor. So we want to make sure this one's good. So halfway to here, halfway to the other wall. Halfway to that wall is about there. We'll call it 12 feet of floor. And the span is four feet. So we need to copy. This is front of stairs, front back. Span was four feet loads we had how much 12 feet we have 12 feet of floor okay on top is fine 20 and 40 floor let's double check make sure we're not missing anything that's on top of this let's see here this is in line right here which is in line oop no it's not Ooh, okay, so I'm noticing something we're going to have to think about. We're going to have to pay attention to. So you also want to pay attention to on this first, on this second floor, all these bracing coming down to this beam, of course, is loading this spot and this wall. Okay, that's inside the wall. That's fine. But on this one, we're loading this right in here. This linear length of wall right here is being loaded with the roof. So it's extra heavy. So what I need to do is make sure that that weight comes down on something that can support it. Well, in this case, this wall is in line with this corner, which is not landing on this wall. It's actually right here, if I could draw a line properly. It's like right there. So the only thing on the only thing above that is the floor joist. So I need to actually make sure that my floor joist either can hold that or that I put another beam in or something. And it's in all likelihood it's fine that my floor joist can hold it, but I need to check. All right, so I need to account for that as well. But aside from that, um, you know what? And that's going to matter because that load 
is going to increase the weight of what's on here because there's a little bit that I'm responsible for. So I'm going to sort of simplify this in terms of math and I'm going to, since my roof load's coming down right here, I'm going to pretend it's on my beam instead. And that's going to over-design my beam because the load's actually on the joist, which is going to send some of the weight this way. But it's close to this beam, so most of the weight's going to come on the beam. All right. So I'm going to assume this purlin load and all this weight is going down onto the beam I'm designing right now. So I'm going to have full height of wall, plus I'm going to have the roof tributary width. So these are nine foot ceilings. So the first thing I'm going to do is come in here, add uniform PSF, get rid of this thing. We have a nine foot wall on top, dead load of a regular wall by itself, five pounds per square foot. Okay, and then we're going to grab this tributary width of this roof. Purlin to ridge and then purlin to wall. We'll call it six and a half feet. Copy. We'll call it six and a half. On top, the roof is 10 dead with a pitch of 10 and 20 roof live load. Okay. So this is not a real loading scenario. This is me getting close and overestimating. Okay. And look at that, 11%, totally stiff. See, see, this is why you overestimate to speed things up because it most of the time doesn't matter. I'm still good, still good, okay? So, two, one and three quarters. Boom, there we go. Get rid of some of these dimensions. Okay. Doing good. All right, so now let's take a look at these floor joists. How are we going to do this? Well, I will tell you how we're going to do this. Basically, we need to isolate and, uh, and approximate what load, in the worst case scenario, would be on these floor joists and where. So, first thing I'm going to do is this. I'm going to see which one of these I want to copy. It's in the nine foot six span zone. So I'm gonna actually copy this joist concentrated guy. Joist concentrated. This is a uh, bike room joist. Okay, you got the nine foot six span on wall and wall. Bracing is correct, loads. Okay, so we don't have this load anymore. What we do have is we're we're now assuming these are our, our floor joists, right? So these are doing 20 and 40. This is the regular floor weight. And each one of these is going to get a point load somewhere on its on itself, let's see where. Uh, this distance right here, one foot six. We're gonna overestimate going a little bit farther. We'll say two feet in from the end. Oops, location is two. So now we need to approximate how much weight is on that spot. How are we gonna do that? Well, we are going to assume we wanted our floor joists 16 inches on center, all right? So we're going to assume that we're gonna carry that 16 inch, because it's a repeating thing, right? We're gonna carry that 16 inch tributary width up through for all of these things and get a load. All right, so here's what I'm doing. In a worst case scenario, I'm assuming I'm directly below a roof brace and I'm taking that load. So what is the load area like for this roof brace? Well, halfway from here to here is here, here to here is here, okay? And then I'm gonna do the left right tributary width as well, and it's gonna give me this kind of rectangle right here, 
So that's the loading area. Change the color. That's the loading area for this one brace. And this one brace is actually the worst case scenario one. So we need to know um, the area here. So what we're gonna do is grab the width of this, six foot three, width of this, uh, four feet. So let's call it six and a half by four. Well, what is that area? Uh, off the top of my head. Well, what is six times four? 24. And then half of four is two. So 26. There's 26 square feet. Okay, so here's how I'm gonna do this. 26 square feet of load is gonna come down this brace to here. Well, we know the roof is 10 pounds per square foot dead load, 20 pounds per square foot live load. Okay. So I'm gonna go into here and I'm gonna take 10 pounds per square foot dead load times my 26 square feet. And then roof is gonna be double that because it's 10 to 20. So this would be 520, okay. Roof brace. And our dead load is actually needs to go up a little bit. So I'm gonna go to a beam real quick and use a little cheater method. Okay, if I have a dead load of 100 and my slope is 10, I am, I'm gonna increase by 30%. That's what I'm using this for, 30.2%. I'm going to, well, I'm going to increase by a third. That's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to delete this. Okay. So I'm going to go back in here. My dead weight needs to increase by one third. Well, it's about 300 pounds right now. So I'm going to add another 100 pounds. I'm only going to overestimate here a little bit. So 360. Okay. So now I'm good. I've got the weight, everything, location. And I'm going to see if it still works. I have worst case scenario picked out everything. And I'm still at 41% capacity. And I'm still stiff. So this is totally fine. I don't need to worry about this. Now, we're going to go back here and just understand that, okay, when I build this wall on these joists at 16 inches on center, and I have a really worst case scenario with the bracing, I'm still okay. I'm still fine. I don't need anything special here. So this beam is over-designed. The floor joists are over-designed in this spot. We are hunky-dory. Great. I like it. Okay. Let's keep going. Okay, so let's do this ridge beam here. This one's going to be real simple. We're just holding roof assembly. It's a vaulted ceiling roof assembly. We'll call it 8 feet of tributary width. and 19 foot five span. We want to not overestimate that. 19 foot five. Oops, I don't want a joist. I want a beam. This is vaulted beam. Span was 19 feet five. Okay, we're gonna be more specific here about how we're doing this. So supports are correct. Top edge bracing is every two feet. Bottom edge bracing is in supports only. Okay, so when I have a tall beam, it's gonna have rafters sitting on it every two feet and nothing on the bottom. Okay, what are my loads? I have a tributary width of seven foot, let's call it eight feet. On top of 10 and 20 roof. Product selection, okay, so can I use LVLs? Probably not these. 
Let's try two 16s. Uh, ooh, you know what? It's actually pretty good. The, def the deciding factor is going to be probably our deflection, but this is pretty good here. Shoot, let's try 14s. Okay, deflection's kind of high. So total, uh, we're about a quarter inch of dead load deflection. So let's let's bump it up back to 16s. All right, 32% not going to break. We're happy. And we're about an eighth of an inch in terms of dead load deflection and about three eighths of an inch in terms of total load. So that's totally fine. We're going to go with two 16 inch LVLs. And just like that, just like that, designed. Okay, great. Let's knock out this one. We're almost done here. Okay, this beam is going left to right. Floor is going left to right. What else is on here? this gable wall is on top of that. So we're going to grab the gable wall plus a little bit of roof overhang. Low floor is going left to right again. Uh, but there's this concentrated load and this concentrated load from this beam. So this is going to be chunky. I'm not going to be surprised if we have to stiffen this up to a 2x6 wall, but let's find out. Okay, we're going to call this kitchen living room kitchen living beam because it's splitting the rooms kitchen living room beam okay what's our span from here to here 12 feet on the money okay that's all correct Top edge bracing is going to be part of the floor system, so it's actually going to be full length. Bottom edge, we'll consider it and supports only. That's fine. Okay. Starting from the bottom. The first thing we're going to do is this ridge beam that's right in the middle, which would be the six foot mark. Okay, so I'm going to delete this. I'm going to link in the vaulted beam reaction one at the six foot mark. And I'm going to add one and a half, 1.75 inches because it's dimensioning from the end of the beam, which includes this wall thickness on top. So see, once I do that, this is exactly in the center. Okay. I got this concentrated load here. From the left end of the beam, it's eight foot five. And that is the primary bedroom front to back. Front. Eight foot five in. All right. So let's link another. Primary bedroom. Oh, I can't read them. That's always fun. It's not that one because it's got a hanger. It's not that one. Uh. It's not that one. Oh, here we go. Primary bedroom, front to back front. We want reaction one. And I already forgot the number here. Eight foot five. On top. Cool. So we have those two point loads. What else? What else, what else, what else? Gable wall and roof overhang. How tall is my gable wall? Go to the front. Okay, we're dealing with this guy right here. So we're just going to kind of, we're, we're not going to mess with tapered load. We're just going to go up and overestimate. Maybe from here to about here. Let's label 14 feet of wall on the whole thing. Call that even though it's not really the whole thing, it's really only like here to here, but that's why we're going to overestimate. It's fine. Get rid of this. 
All right, the whole length, 14 feet tall. The wall is eight pounds per square foot. Nothing else. And it's on top of it. And then we have three feet of roof overhang. Full length, three feet on top of 10, pitch of 10, 20 pounds per square foot dead load. This is roof overhang on top of that wall. All righty. I think that's it. Oops. Yeah, ceiling's running left to right here, so that's it. What do we need? Let's try to get at this stick in the floor system first of all. Let's try three, 11, and seven eighths. 47%, that's pretty good. Let's see if two works. 71%, yeah, let's do it. All right, so 71% is not bad, and deflection's not crazy. Well, dead load deflection's getting up towards a quarter inch, and this is gonna define like a very clean edge, so let's actually stiffen this guy up with three. Well, you know what, I might not. Okay, so let's check something else here. What weight is on the ends of my beam? Three thousand something. Okay. Hmm. All right, we're gonna do this. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna assume. We're gonna go with two, because two ply works. Then we're gonna make sure that we're not crushing the studs. We're gonna do that later, because we're not concerned with that right now. So. We're gonna go with two. Everybody, everybody wins. There we go. Two, one to quarter by 11 centimeters LDLs. Great, it's impressive, they're strong. All right, now outside of the porch, here's what I'm gonna do. I want this to be consistent all the way around, so I'm gonna design the front one, and then I'm just gonna label these guys over here, and I'm gonna know that they are overkill. And the reason for that is because this span is so much bigger. Even though these ones are holding a little bit more roof weight, it's gonna be insignificant. This is gonna be the biggest defining one. So, what's my span? 14 foot 10. And I'm going to hold some gable wall and a little bit of roof because I'm landing my roof ridge right here. So I'm going to capture a little bit more roof than I normally would. I'll overestimate just a hair here just to be conservative. Okay, so 14 foot 10 span. Front porch, front. 14 foot, I already forgot. 10, 14 foot 10. Okay, support one, support two. These are columns. It's not gonna matter a ton, but we'll just try to be correct. Top edge bracing, we'll just call it in supports only. All right, what are the loads here? Okay, I've got the roof overhang. I'm gonna widen this to five feet. I guess we'll just call it a little bit more because I'm capturing a little more weight. And then how tall is my gable wall? It's going to taper from zero to approximately seven feet ish. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to taper from zero up to eight feet and then down. Just be conservative. Okay, here's how I do that. It is not across the full length. It's across halfway. Half of 15 foot and a half is seven and three quarters. And we're gonna go, uh, sorry, tapered from zero to eight tributary width, okay? On top, dead load is eight, no other weight. Good to go. I'm gonna copy this, change this to seven foot nine, okay? And we're gonna go from eight down to zero on this side. So if we look at it, 
it should flip this once it figures out what it's doing. Come on. Think about what you've done. Great. Okay. There we go. All right. We don't want to use LVLs on the front porch if we can avoid it. We want to try to use commodity lumber first of all. Does two two by twelves do it? Nope, spans too far. How about four? Four is eighty percent and not that much deflection, and it's cheaper than everything else. So let's do it. Four two by twelves. Four two by twelve. So then yellow pine number two. Boom, there we go. And for consistency and thickness, I'm going to just do this on these guys. These can be furred down or whatever, but the basic premise is, you know, we got the beam. Oh, there's this guy right here. Okay, this guy right here, what is he holding up? He's holding up effectively nothing. Just like some ceiling. It's basically a double, yeah, no, this shouldn't, this does not need to be here like this. But I will say, actually, there's a note up here. I think I already wrote it out. Double ceiling joist. This is not a rafter issue, but I will double ceiling joist at edge right here. Perfect. And there you have it. We have the selection and design of all of our beams.